Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And in recording my broadband image processing video, I realized it might be a good idea to cover a couple of common background extraction issues before releasing it. And that's what we're gonna do today. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump into PixInsight and learn about a couple of common background extraction issues and how to fix them. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a couple of common issues that you might run into with background extraction. Now it's important to understand that this isn't everything that could happen with background extraction. This is just a couple of common issues that could happen and how to fix them. For this video, we're going to be working with a couple of images, M31 Andromeda Galaxy and IC434 Horsehead Nebula. Now in my workflow videos, you hear me say that we always want to start off with the correction phase of the image. And the first couple of steps in that correction phase is setting the stage for background extraction. Now IC434 here is a perfect example of if we make a mistake during those first couple of steps, or if we miss a step altogether. And what I mean by that, let's go to script, SETI Astro, automatic DBE. Let's go ahead and execute it. And we're gonna see some interesting results. Now, once this is done, I'm gonna show you what happened and how to fix it. So automatic DBE is gonna go ahead and use dynamic background extraction set some points within the image so we can use those points to extract the background. Let's go ahead and do an auto stretch on the background model. We can immediately see something went terribly wrong. But what happened? Let's minimize our background model. And let's do a quick auto stretch on our newly background extracted image. Here we can see this isn't right. So what happened? Now, if we go into View, Explorer Windows, and we go to History Explorer, you wanna make sure that you're using the image that was background extracted. So we'll go ahead and find our image in the History Explorer window. We'll see here that we have the Astro Image Primer, underscore G underscore S2 underscore middle underscore ADVE, which is the image we're working on. And we'll see dynamic background extraction. The last process ran. If we double click, this will open up dynamic background extraction and show us all of the points that were placed within the image. Now in my workflow videos, you hear me talk about stacking artifacts and how we need to crop those out. Now I see 434 here was a monochrome image and in monochrome imaging you do what's called star alignment and star alignment takes your images and perfectly aligns them with each other. Whether that be pointing differences in taking your images or rotational differences because every filter is imaged separate from one another, and there can be differences. Now, if we were to zoom in on the image and we go up to the top, we see this massive black band, and that band is due to star alignment. It's also due to pointing differences, anything that causes a major difference in how the images align with each other can cause this band. Now this is an extreme example, but this is also a realistic example. This is real data that I captured. And when we look at this, we can see one of the background extraction points were placed in it. We have another one here in the corner, and then we have some more as we go down the line. This is an example of missing the step 
of dynamic crop. So what we want to do, let's go ahead and exit out of dynamic background extraction. Let's minimize this image here for just a moment. And let's go into process all processes and let's come down to dynamic crop. Let's draw a cropping box in the image, zoom in, and ensure that all of our stacking artifacts are cropped out, especially this black band. We'll scan the edges and just make sure that our cropping box is exactly where we want it. And then we'll go ahead and click the little green check mark and then we'll just zoom back in really quick to double check, make sure that everything is exactly where we want it and that we don't have any stacking artifacts left. We have some low signal areas in here, that's okay. That shouldn't make much of a difference. And what we'll do is exit out of dynamic crop, go back into script, SETI Astro, automatic DBE. We'll execute and then we'll see if cropping made a difference. Again, SETI Astro script is going to automatically place the dynamic background extraction points throughout the image, extract the background, give us a background model. And if we auto stretch the background model, we see a much different result. And then we take our newly background extracted image, do a quick auto stretch, and we have a much much better result, especially if we compare to this result. And we can very easily see the difference in the background model. Now, what happens if we do everything right? Now, let's take a look at M31 Andromeda Galaxy. This image has had linear fit the star correction, and even dynamic crop performed on it. So we've performed all of the steps on this image to set the stage for background extraction. But if we go into script, SETI Astro, automatic DBE, and we execute it, we're gonna find a little bit of an interesting result on this one as well. So again, the script is gonna go ahead and and place the points in the image for dynamic background extraction, extract the background, provide us a background model, and then we'll go ahead and see the results. So we'll do a quick auto stretch on the background model, and it looks decent. We'll move it off to the side. And then if we were to go ahead and do a quick auto stretch on the background extracted image, we have a little bit of a messy result. So what happened? If we take a look at the top right corner, we can see that it wasn't extracted quite right. There's something missing. So if we go into view, explore windows, and then we were to come down to history explorer, We'll choose our image here, Astro Image Primer, underscore highest, underscore ADBE. And we see the background extraction. We'll double click. And if we take a look, we have quite a few points that are misplaced. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here. And we have some points piled up, but we don't have any points placed in this top right area, the area that we had an issue. So let's take some of these points that are piled up and let's just go ahead and move them. We'll take some samples of the area here that wasn't properly extracted. We'll move some around and just kind of spread them out just a little bit more. And now let's go ahead and take a look at some other areas. We can see a few points have actually been placed within the galaxy itself. We don't want that. We want these points to be away from structure and in areas that we want to sample. 
and those areas should always be the background itself. We don't want any structure to be sampled because we can get some strange results as we saw. So I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna go ahead and separate them out and ensure that they're in the background. Again, we're very close if not on the galaxy itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of separate these out just make sure that everything is where we want it to be. In other words, background and nothing else. I'm gonna move a couple of these points away from the bright structure here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna scan the image. We have a couple of points here, right smack in the middle of the galaxy. And we wanna get those out of the galaxy and just spread them throughout the background. Now these scripts do a very good job, but sometimes you run into some little issues and, and they require going in there and, and just kind of fine tuning. So now since we have some uh, areas sampled here that are um, that we didn't have sampled earlier, such as this top right corner, and we moved all of the points off of the galaxy itself, what we want to do is take the triangle for dynamic background extraction, drag it onto the workspace, exit out of dynamic background extraction. We'll go ahead and minimize our original background extracted image. And we'll take our original. I'm going to go ahead and clone it so we have a before and after. Minimize the clone, move it off to the side. And if we take our icon that we just placed on the workspace, double click, it's going to transfer all of the points that we just placed onto our image. We'll click the green check mark and we'll have a new background model. We'll minimize our new background model, exit out of dynamic background extraction, and our background has been extracted. It looks a little bit washed out, but if we do a quick auto stretch, we can immediately see that we have a much better result. Now, if you wanna do any kind of fine tuning, like if you see some areas that you don't really like, I'll take this little bottom right corner here. Uh, I don't like how that came out. What we can do is reopen dynamic background extraction through the icon that we set and we can take some of these points and move them to a different area. So for example, I'll take that point that was in the upper right quadrant, I'll move it down into this corner over here so we can sample this corner. Since that corner didn't have anything there and it was still just a little bit bright, we also have another area up over here. So these two seem to be pretty close. So I'll move that up to the top and we'll go ahead and drag another instance of dynamic background extraction onto the workspace because we moved some points so we want to save that. We'll exit out of dynamic background extraction and let's take our clone here since this has not had any background extraction that's the reason why I want to clone so we can experiment. I'll take another clone just in case I need to redo it again. I'll take my new icon with the new point locations and then I'll click the green check mark. We'll check out our background model. We'll exit out of dynamic background extraction, do a quick stretch, and there we go. This is a much better result than what we had over here. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link in this video's description if you're in the market for some new gear. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. 
What background extraction issues have you faced? What did you do to fix them? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.